Hey, what's going on you guys? My name is Joseph Tubb and today I'm going to show you how to paint a graphic or a logo onto the surface of the guitar without having to prime the guitar. Now what I mean by priming the guitar is just like what we did in the guitar series where we actually sprayed a white primer on the face of the guitar. The way we're going to do this is we need to do a couple things first. One, we do have to do some prep work. The first thing that we're going to need to do is we need to sand down the clear coat on the back of this guitar. Now the reason for that is so that one, we have a surface that the paint pens can grab onto and two, is so that when we go to spray a clear coat, we'll have a nice even finish. So the things you're going to need for this is essentially some Posca pens and some wet dry sandpaper. So the next thing that we need to do here is we need to wipe down the guitar just to clean off any kind of weird residue or any kind of grease. So I got a microfiber towel here that I'm going to wipe everything down with. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to tape off the sides of this guitar and the face. Very similar to what we did in the guitar series where we taped off the back, but this time we're going to do it to the front. Okay, so now that we have all the taping done, as you can see, we taped around the whole sides of the guitar and the front, and we kind of followed it around. We used the same method and technique that we used in How to Paint Your Own Guitar uh, in that series. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take some 1000 grit sandpaper and we're going to lightly sand the surface of this guitar to get it to a matte finish. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna grab our sandpaper and like I said, like I always say, just kind of let the sandpaper do the work. It's uh, been soaking in some water, so that's good. And um, get a little bit of water on the guitar. And you also might want to have some paper towels on the side just so you can wipe everything down. All right, so then you grab your paper towels and let's wipe away this uh, water and we'll see where we are, see how much more we need to do. So judging from the surface of this, we still have quite a more to do. Uh, the idea, here you go, you can see, you see how my lamp, when it starts to disappear <laughs> into the guitar, then you know you've gotten to the right point. So that's kind of where we're shooting for. We're trying to get to this point where you kind of lose a light surface in the guitar. So we're doing good here. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to do any more sanding in this general location, but we're going to focus more on the guitar. <clears throat> okay. So now we've sanded down the finish on this guitar to where it is a complete matte finish. So now the light doesn't even show up on here. Now this is the goal. This is where you want to get to. This is the perfect surface for these paint pens. So the next step here is that we have our design here. We're going to draw this design on. Now you have two methods you can do this. You can either use a pencil um, at this point, which is good, or you could use a colored pencil if you're working on a darker surface uh, where you can't see the pencil, or you can actually use a Posca pen. You know, you could take one of these white ones and um, you could take like a white Posca pen and you can actually draw your design on. What I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to use a pencil and do a carbon copy transfer. Um, now you've seen me do this in the getting started series with, you know, you spend all this time drawing a design and you want to use that exact thing. This is how you can do it. I've had some, I've had a, quite a number of emails of people asking me how to do that or show a video of this. So what we're going to do here is we're going to flip this over and we're actually going to color the back of this with pencil. And then what we can do is we can trace over everything and it will transfer directly onto our surface. Okay, so what I've done here is this was the this is the uh, the design that I cut out for him. So what I've done is I've actually made a copy of this and then I cut it out exposed leaving some more of the white on the surface so that I could have a little bit more space so that I can make sure that I can get the outline. So what you're going to want to do here if you're going to do this method is that you're going to want to get a soft lead. Now I'm using a 7B pencil. Now this is a really soft lead. And the reason for that is just the softer it is, the easier it is for it to transfer over and the less work you have to do filling in the background space on the back. So what we're going to do here is we're going to flip this over and we're just essentially going to take this pencil and we're going to kind of fill the back in just like so. All right. Now the nice thing about doing this technique is you kind of it's kind of foolproof. You can't really mess up your design at this point because you've already spent all the time doing it on paper. So now what you're going to do is you're just going to transfer it on. So once you figure out, you know, the placement that you want to put this on, I think I'm going to go for this as placement. 
The one thing you want to do next is just kind of lay a couple pieces of tape. And that's where this uh, having that white space on here kind of helps. Just kind of tape this down just so it doesn't move on you. And then the next thing you want to do is, again, stay with the softer leads. You don't want to have a hard lead doing this. Now I have a 4B. Now the reason why you want to use a softer lead while you do this transfer is so that you're, you're not pushing down really hard. Um, the softer the lead is, you can apply a little bit more pressure and it's really just a safety precaution so that you're not like creating an indent into the paint or into the, the original clear coat. So that's what the softer lead, the softer lead allows you to go a little, add a little bit more pressure without having any kind of uh, consequence. So I'm gonna zoom in here so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. All right, so that's our design. Now, the reason why we're not gonna tape the whole thing down is so that what we can do is what, while we're doing this, we'll have one piece that we can kind of lift up periodically to check to make sure that we get everything. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to trace out all of your lines that are on this guitar. I'm going to do a couple test pieces before I actually get going um, just to make sure that it's working. So I just did one piece and there you go. You can see barely on camera that that line transferred over. And then just kind of let it fall back into place and just do the whole design. Another thing that's really nice about doing this is that you don't have to worry so much about making a mistake. I mean, that's probably the best part about doing this. It's essentially redrawing what you've already designed out for this guitar. So there we go. That simple. So now what we're going to do is we're going to lift our tape, make sure that we got all our lines. And it looks like we did and you can see it on camera. And what's perfect about this is it's light. It's not going to show through on our, um, on our paint and our design is done. So now at this point, what we can do is we can remove, we can remove our uh, template here, move that to the side and then go ahead and start painting. Now, the one thing you want to make sure is that you want to make sure that you get these lines or these smudge marks. So what I would recommend is maybe using a little bit of water on your paper towel and they should rub right off. And I got some over here. Now the reason why you obviously don't wanna have pencil marks in here is because you wanna make it look like this design was tattooed on. So the next thing here is obviously we're gonna paint the design. Okay, so before we actually start painting, I kind of want to just show you guys the colors that I'm going to be using. Again, you know, but going back in the guitar series, you, when you do these color studies, you kind of want to do them referencing to the colors of your paint pens. And that's kind of what I've done here. I've left the colors based upon um, what I have in my paint and my pens. So I'm using primarily a lot of the 3Ms, uh, the fine tips. I have one that's a 5M and then and then we got the details uh, for black and white and the 1Ms. So these are the basic colors that I'm going to be using and we're just going to go ahead and start slapping it on. So the one thing you're going to notice immediately while you're doing this is the pens, the paint will stay wet for a pretty good amount of time. So this kind of lets you set up to where you can kind of place your colors. Um, and kind of set yourself up for the blendings. So what I've done here is kind of done the basic roughs in with one color and then I'm going to come back in with this pink and we're going to lay the, uh, the solid color. Now the one thing you really can't avoid is with these lighter colors, you know when you're, when you're working on these surfaces you're going to see a little bit of the stroke marks that are created from the pens. Now this is kind of cool, I like this because it creates a texture on the surface, it can really you can really play it into your paint, into the design, you know, to emphasize certain things or, um, you know, just different things. Some people don't really like the idea that the pens kind of show that, but I do. I think it's really cool. I, it, it's kind of one of those things that kind of grew on me. So now what we're doing is we're actually going to start blending these colors in. What I like to do is I like to clean the tip off a lot, um, and that's primarily to preserve that original 
the original color of this pen. So what I have here is I use like some post-it notes and um, let me see, get this in here. I use some post-it notes and I kind of clean the pens off with that. It works pretty, it's pretty effect, effective. And then what I'm going to do is while I have that pink a little wet, I'm going to come in here and just kind of add a couple drops of white. And that's just to kind of give me a little bit of value play. And then I'm going to blend that white in with the, uh, the pink again. I want it to be like completely noticeable, but I want it to be a little subtle. And then so we're just going to keep doing this all the way around. Alright, so what you see me doing at this point is I'm going to, to do these eyes, I want to have like a little bit of a hint of purple in the blue, but if I apply the purple into the paint first, it's going to be too much. So what I like to do sometimes is I like to mix my colors before I actually put them on, and the way I do that is I kind of put them on paper, and then I take the color that I want, and then I start applying it. So I just got a little bit of a purple haze in there. That's what I wanted. That white is sure white. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do here is we're going to start outlining. So I'm gonna be using a 1M uh, Posca. It's a very fine tip. So here we go. So the trick here is to just kinda of be a little bit tight with what you're doing. Take your time. What you're trying to do is just get the basic outline. You're not trying to go in and like fully detail everything right from the get-go. You just kind of want to get the basic lines in there just so you kind of know where things are. Um, and this is also good to like kind of reference back to your concept design. Um, you know, the one that you put time in. Because you've already kind of figured out where you want all your lines to be. All right, so we've done the basic outline, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do a full outline of the whole graphic here, and this is just the profile line. It's really nice to do this because it kind of helps the image to pop off the surface. And what this pretty much does is, this is kind of like a technique that cartoonists use to kind of help their, to help their images kind of pop off the canvas or you know to help pop them off the paper it just kind of brings them a little bit more alive and it kind of lets you know kind of gives you an idea of the the overall shape of the character 
So I'm just taking a uh, a three in Posca and kind of working my way all the way around it. You notice that I'm spinning the canvas. This is primarily because I don't want to rest my hand on wet paint. Okay, so now the last step that we need to do is we need to add the highlights in. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use a white Posca. I'm using the 1M Posca pen and we're gonna just add some highlights, you know, very similar to what we did in our concept, you know, just around everything. So, here we go. All right, now with the basic highlights done, now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna highlight or outline this uh, design with the white pen. Now this is just to help grab more emphasis to this graphic and it's gonna help also to pop off the page. So I'm just gonna use the same pen and I'm just gonna outline everything. And the final touch is to kinda add some detail into those eyes. All right, so now the last thing that we need to do is just sign our name, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that right here. And there we go. And that's it, you guys. So now the last thing that you need to do is we need to spray a clear coat over this whole guitar body. I'm gonna zoom out here. So this is how you do it. This is how you would paint a graphic or logo onto this guitar. So now the next step, the final step here, is to go ahead and clear coat it. Now what I would recommend doing is mist two or three coats of Krylon Clear onto this guitar. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna introduce the clear coat to the guitar, or to the paint. If you were to soak it in real quick, you might see the paint actually start to separate. What I would do is uh, just go ahead and watch uh, the other videos that I've already posted on, you know, how to clear coat and polish the guitar to get it back to that original finish. So at the end of this video, I'll show you guys exactly what it looks like when it's all said and done. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, or anything like that, go ahead and leave those down in the comment section. I'll make sure to answer those. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.